I have been researching the possibilities of a 360 camera for some time and noticed that it can also be used as a 3D scanner. But how useful can the 3D models produced with it really be and how large areas can we actually scan with it? There is one web service that specially offers solutions for 3D scans made with a 360 camera. It is called Cubix Vista. Hello boys and girls, it's Olli here again. This time I decided to take a closer look at what kind of 3D models I can produce through the Cubix Vista service. Cubix itself is a company that produces solutions for construction sites use and utilizes 3D data that can be used in planning and, for example, connecting BIM models to real-world references. But in addition to that, they also have a Cubix Vista service, which is on its beta stage and allows anyone to make 3D scans of their environments using their own 360 camera. And what's special about this is that you can produce fairly large scans of various indoor or outdoor spaces. They are produced simply by shooting video with 360 camera you just turn on video recording and walk crisscross around the area you want to 3D scan. It sounds really easy, and it actually is, but what kind of end results can you get from this? And where can you use the 3D models produced with the Cubix Vista? I did some experiments. Cubix Vista supports the most common 360 cameras available for consumer use especially the Insta360 products, which are very compact and popular cameras, are also very compatible with this service. I made my experiments using my own Insta360 RS1 1-inch camera, which I have used a lot in my other videos as well. A selfie stick is a necessary accessory because it's good to raise the camera to high place where it can see as wide as possible. There were also interesting examples on Cubic's website where a 360 camera is attached to a construction site helmet. In this way you can transform yourself into a Google Street View car that scans and describes streets views for Google Maps services. And the same technology is also at issue here. We practically produce a 3D map when we use a 360 camera to model our environments and surrounding areas. I chose one indoor space and one outdoor space for my 3D scanning experiment. The outdoor destination was a rather large area where an interesting piece of landscape art called Up and Under is located. Its twisting surfaces and exciting cut-through tunnels made it an excellent target for this 3D modeling. The Cubix Vista instructions says that maximum video recording can be up to 20 minutes long continuous shot. In that time, you can walk around fairly large area, but actually scanning distance from the camera is ultimately quite narrow. The instruction says that everything with a radius about 5 meters from the camera's lens is included in the scan. So if you want to scan a large flat area, you have to walk through a relatively dense zigzag to cover everything. The tutorial on the website has a good illustration of this. To cover an area the size of a football field, you would have to walk it end to end eight times. Of course, this is not always possible. The places where you go are different and you may encounter obstacles that you cannot get around. Then you just have to continue and go through other way. So it is worth planning the scanning route a little in advance and it is recommended that the scan should end in the same place where you started. Cubix Vista also has its own app for smartphones, but its purpose was a bit unclear to me. 
At first I thought that it would somehow store GBS coordinates, but that's not the point. The app doesn't work like that. Although you can remotely control your 360 camera through it and start recording from your phone. But it actually only works as a timer that indicates how long you have recorded your route. So the application is by no means mandatory and you don't have to use it when you scan the areas. I used almost the entire 20 minutes time limit for outdoor scanning. But the interior was much faster to implement. I did a scan of a lobby and the first couple of floors of the apartment building. I was interested in finding out how well the scanning works at different height levels and how the floors of the house are saved in the scan. Scanning the interior can be challenging because you can't necessarily raise the camera very high so it doesn't hit the ceiling. So you often have to keep it in front of you and then you will inevitably appear in the picture yourself. This doesn't always matter if you appear in the picture. When the 3D model is processed, you will be removed from the 3D model itself. But sometimes your body may cover some details from the image that would be relevant for the 3D model. So indoors you should avoid tight spaces and the camera should not be placed too close to the walls when you walk through long corridors. Well, after recording the 360 video, you need to upload the material to Cubic Twister's web service. It's very straightforward. You just log in, do the service and press the create new button. The service asks what brand of camera you use to scan their location. It's nice to notice that Cubic Swister directly understand native .insv format produced by Insta360 cameras, so you don't have to do any editing or conversions for your footage. You can directly upload files from your camera as they are. However, you should note that Cubix can only receive one shot at a time. It does not accept materials where scanning has been done with several recordings. After that, Cubix cloud service takes care of the whole process and all you have to do is wait. And wait can take a really long time, depending on how long you record it. My interior scan was completed reasonably quickly, but the scan done outdoors, which was almost maximum of 20 minutes long, it took several hours to process. So you shouldn't wait for the process to be completed. Cubix will send you an email when the job is done. After 3D processing, the system is a little different than you might be used to in these services. The process offers you the opportunity to download the model in a special CPC format, which you can then use in a separate viewer. And the viewer is called Vista Point, which is located at a completely different address than the Cupic Vista. This is a bit strange. Why can't the model just be opened directly for viewing? Why do you have to download a version of the model that you can't be used anywhere else than just in the specific viewer? Perhaps there is a reason for this, I just haven't figured it out yet. In any case, when you have recycled the CPC file on your machine and uploaded it back to this VistaPoint viewer, you can now start examining what kind of a 3D model the process has produced for you. The VistaPoint viewer is interesting and quite versatile. The first thing you will definitely notice are the bubbles that marks the 360 images that have been captured from your video recording. When you click one of these open, you will notice that Cubix Vista has actually built an entire virtual tour of the area you have captured. You can rotate the view and the 3D camera will automatically update to point in the direction you are looking in the image. This is a pretty cool feature. The bubbles can also be turned off and you can also view the model in different 
point cloud modes. But what I think is particularly interesting is that you can also view the path you traveled from the model which is drawn as a colorful line and tells you fascinatingly exactly how you walked in the area when you recorded the video. The colors tell you where you moved too fast and where the speed was appropriate. But even though these are interesting features, we also need to look at the 3D model itself and see how accurately it is modeled. This can be a pretty good 3D graphics for a dollhouse implementation. And by dollhouse I mean presentation method that is used as a general overall illustration in connection with 360 virtual tours that we have seen in other services such as on Cloud Pano or Matterport. But as an actual photogrammetry model, the result is very average. The 3D model is full of holes and its textures are not precisely positioned. In the outdoor model, I noticed that the 3D perception range of the scan is unfortunately very narrow and the large parts of the model have been left out of the calculation. But where can we use such 3D models if the mesh structure is not very usable? I think that the purpose of these models is not to act as a 3D asset that we are used to using, for example in games or 3D visualizations. When you explore the Vista Point viewer more, you will find measurement tools and these create a completely new purpose for the 3D model. With these you can take measurements from the model and calculate areas, angles and volumes. And for this purpose of use, I am beginning to understand that these 3D scans can really be used as a digital twins, which can be used based on measurement data, for example in architectural plans or for example in garden planning. It can have many practical uses. The final result can be downloaded from the viewer as a PLY point cloud file or as a GLB model, which can then be easily used in, for example, Blender or other 3D programs. Cubix Vista is interesting and easy to use. But what particularly interests me are the possibilities that may be added to the program in the near future. There are videos on Cubic's YouTube page that shows that it is also possible to calculate 3D Gaussian splatting models from 360 data. Gaussian splatting feature would definitely change a lot and would bring enormously more dimension to use of Cubic Vista. It would not only improve the appearance of the models, but it would also increase the dimensions of the 3D perception range. The best video shown on YouTube looks promising, and I'm looking forward to when these features can be included in Cubix Vista functionality. But while waiting for that, I recommend testing Cubix Vista if you have a 360 camera and want to scan the backyard of your own house or make plans for the basement or attic floors. This can be particularly good utility for that. Thanks for watching this video. I will continue to explore these useful 3D applications. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.